Hey guys, welcome back to Rocket City Outdoors. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a battery disconnect switch on your bass boat. My boat is a Skeeter TZX 190. There's a little something extra in this video. I make brackets for battery disconnect switches that fit um, a lot of the bass boats out there today, both new and old, and I sell them on my website, rocketcityoutdoors.com. So make sure to go and check them out on rocketcityoutdoors.com. They're pretty cool, and I'm gonna start offering powder coat options uh, very soon. This is the switch that I want to install, and I want to have it switch um, my trolling motor. Um, I have a Garmin Force, and so it's a, a set up for 24 volts. So I have two batteries, and I'm gonna mount this battery disconnect switch about right here and install it. Uh, real quick, um, I was talking about the brackets that I make. I have a bracket for a corner mount, um, flow route remote drain plug switch, so you can actuate your drain plug. Um, here, it stays covered up. It's not up there around the console or around your live well switches, so you can't get confused. You can't have a kid play with it and accidentally unplug your boat while you're out fishing. Over here, I have a battery disconnect switch bracket. Um, it is just painted black, uh, just regular spray paint that you can get at Lowe's. I'm gonna start offering powder coat options very soon, but this switch is not a Blue Sea Systems, it's just your standard issue, um, generic switch that you can get off Amazon or eBay. And it switches my C-Clear um, power harness. It doesn't switch the, the main motor or electronics, just my fancy electronics. But back to what you're probably interested, we are going to install this battery disconnect switch. Since I don't have any more corners, I'm gonna have to mount it to this uh, straight section here. And that's what this bracket is for. It is aluminum, brushed aluminum. It's pretty stiff, won't rust. And so I don't, I don't have any concern um, of it breaking either. All right, we're gonna need a couple of battery cables for this exercise. Um, this switch does have the combined batteries options. I'm not gonna go over that or hook up um, that, uh, that terminal today. I, I'm probably gonna do that in, an, in a later video, so make sure to subscribe um, so you can watch out for that video in the future. Um, but this, this does do just um, off, on and then combine batteries. This combine batteries function would be nice if for whatever reason your cranking battery um, lost juice, you could do a combined battery and basically use your trolling motor batteries to jump your motor if you get in that situation. But we're not gonna hook up that option today. We're just gonna hook up this switch. And the first thing we wanna do is understand the switch. So physically just looking at the switch, it comes with uh, looking like this and one side has already been popped out but you can pop out um, all of these faces for for access um, this also comes off um, as well so you could I guess um, technically mount it on the bracket and leave it like that but you can also have the housing for, for extra protection. I recommend always you go with as much protection as you can, so we're probably gonna use the housing. Since I'm on a 24 volt system, I am going to basically put the switch in this line here, which goes from uh, the battery to the fuse block. So I'm gonna remove this, and basically we're gonna hook the uh, switch up to break this connection. This is the positive connection. If you just want a, a single switch, um, you're just switching one power source. Um, you're gonna wanna go with the 6006 Blue C M series, which is not this one. This is the dual circuit one, 6000, or yeah, 6011. This one will work for what I'm doing. It's just, um, if, if this is all you're doing is cutting your trolling motor battery on and off, it's probably not the, um, it's not the simplest one, I guess. But um, regardless, when you flip it over, 
Um, if you had the 6006, you would basically just have these two poles. So it's really simple. You, you connect your leads here and then your switch um, breaks that connection. But for this one, it's the same thing. It's just a dual circuit. Um, we, and when you flip it over, you're gonna see some numbers down in there. I don't know if you can see it in the light, but there's a one. This one is labeled one. This one is labeled one. This one is labeled two. This one is labeled two. So all we're gonna be doing is the, the number ones. Um, and we can test that to make sure that it's doing what we think it's doing with a voltmeter. So right now we are in the off position. Since we're in the off position, we should not be connected between one and one here. We flip it to the on position. And then when we go from one to one, 0.2 ohms. So that is a connection. So let's go from one to two, no connection, one to two. So there we go. Now, if we go over to the combined batteries and we go from one to one, you can see 0.1 ohms and one to two, 0.1 ohms as well. So now everything is connected. So, but since for our, for, for this installation, nothing will ever be connected to two, even if you go to the combined batteries position, it won't do anything. So now that we have verified, we understand how the switch works, we're gonna hook everything up. First thing I'm gonna do uh, to hook everything up is to remove this cable from the battery and then the fuse block. So I have the small jumper cable that went from the battery to the fuse block removed. I went ahead and figured out how my switch is gonna be assembled. So this is on the number one and this is on the number one. And I've already figured out that it's gonna be oriented like this. So off is going to be this way, on is going to be this way, and that's how it just falls out to working best in, in my application. I also went and added some shrink tube since there was some exposed uh, metallic surfaces here. I'm also going to do that for this end as well. Now I'm going to install um, the connector ends to the fuse and the battery and I'm not going to mount it first. I want to install it then I can bring it up connected here and I can figure out exactly where my, my bracket can go. And to be clear I'm going to install one terminal here and one terminal here on the fuse blocks. So we have it installed. It looks like it's going to be able to go about right here which I think will work. And just to show you I have one coming out, this one going to the battery, and then the other one going to the fuse block here. So as you can see, it's in the off position, so my trolley motor should not turn on. So usually you can just press this button and it turn on. You can see I'm getting no power to it. I just turned it to the on position and I heard it beep, so I think it's turning on. So yeah, now you can see it's powering up as soon as I turned it to the on position. So since we're indoors, it's not gonna get a satellite, so I'm gonna go ahead and just power it off here and turn it off and then turn the switch to the off position. So I'm gonna put the switch to the side and we're now gonna mount the bracket. So I have a video out uh, on my channel where I installed my remote uh, drain plug. And when I did, and I was screwing in the screws, screws here, um, I drilled out the holes and I chipped um, the, the, I guess it's the gel coat around the hole and it, and it flaked and it wasn't a clean hole. So I've learned since then that if you put down some masking tape over this, it should help prevent that. So. I've never tried it since I've learned that, so we're about to find out. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and put the screws um, and mount the switch to the bracket so I can hold the bracket up here and mark my holes. Right, so we got the bracket mounted. And just so you know, if you buy the bracket, for me or any of my brackets, the mounting, these, this hardware here comes included. I don't provide these screws because I don't know what you're screwing this into. I don't know if you just need a regular threaded fastener and a nut on the backside, or if you need sheet metal screw, or if you just need a, a, a machine screw. So I honestly wanna get it as far over as I can to the camera's left. So I think, I think that's about right. So once you got it where you want, just uh, get a Sharpie and mark the holes. Lay that off to the side, go back in. So, and then always measure twice, cut once, right? So make sure the holes line up. And they do. It's always good to it's always good to work up to the fastener size. Now, I have to be super careful. You see these fuel lines? I can't hit those, right? So when you're working on your boat, man, you gotta, you gotta think about what's behind it. So fortunately, these fuel lines are below this level, just barely, um, but I'm not going in far, and right behind this is um, thick fiberglass all the way across every point, so. Whenever you're doing this, be super careful. And in this situation, I cannot get a straight on hole. So I just kind of have to live with what I can get, right? Okay, so I started small. This isn't where I want to end up being. Just start with a small hole, work your way up. You can always check, make sure everything lines up, and it does. One thing I just noticed is I am gonna have to take this switch off to get this, to mount this center um, fastener here. And then I'll just have to remount the switch once this is mounted, but that's no big deal. You may end up having the same issue, but it looks like everything's good and ready to go to the next size. All right, so this last size is a 964. And it's the last size I want to go. This isn't the screw length I'm going to use, but I'm just going to test to see how well it it grabs. Still a little, a little hard. So I'm gonna go up one more size. All right, this is an 1164. Test that bite. 
Yeah, I think that's good. That's gonna work just right. So, the drill bit I used is an 11 64th for the final diameter. All right, so let's take the masking tape off and see how the holes look. Look pretty good. A little bit of chipping right there. That hole looks the best, but overall, I think that'll work. All right, so the nylock nuts that I provide, um, you can see there's actually like a, a hex cut out in the bottom of the, this tray. Um, that's really cool because you don't need a wrench to tighten it. You just need a screwdriver. But when you're taking it apart, which what I what I need to do, you got to hold the bottom of it, and spread out the palm of your hand, so you get you're holding those nuts in place. And unscrew them. All right, so I have three number ten screws. We're going to install the bracket now. Find the hole. These fasteners are a half inch long. They go in nice and smooth. Honestly, you know, I kind of like that they're at an angle because this thing's really stiff, but it just helps secure them because this is kind of like a diving board. Um, it's not as sturdy as a corner mount, um, but it is sturdy. It is sufficiently sturdy. Um, you won't have to worry about it, so you can feel how sturdy it is. And it's aluminum, it's strong, it's not plastic. Um, so you're not gonna have to worry about it. So now we can hold the nut in the bottom, get the fastener started. Go to the next one. I know my arm's in the way, but I like doing opposite corners. Kind of like a star pattern whenever you're putting your tire on, you know? All right, last but not least, the door fit check works. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if this video helped you out, uh, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. Also that notification bell for more videos coming out. Um, and make sure to go to rocketcityoutdoors.com, subscribe to the email uh, newsletter update. Um, that'll let you know when new products are coming out. So spread the word on the brackets. Um, uh, I think they're a good idea and uh, try to make them as, affordable as I can. So thanks for watching.